This is where my life belongs. Today, we are going to look at Microsoft Access. All right, so here I am um, on my computer and I am going to search for Access and open that. So after opening Microsoft Access, you need to select blank database. And the difference with Access and the other applications is that you have to give it a name before you actually get into it. So I'm going to name this test. All right. So after it is that you have named your document and you are now in Microsoft Access, it will take you to this page or this screen. All right, so what you will find are five basic ribbons. So you have your home ribbon, the create ribbon, the external data ribbon, the database tool ribbons, and the field ribbons. There are other um, ribbons that will appear depending on what you're doing. And because I have table one open, um, I have the table ribbon, but the basic ones are these five. So under your home ribbon, mm -hmm. you can find the different views, which we are going to discuss shortly. We have paste, we have sort and filter options right here. We have the records, we have um, find, which you can find and replace. And we have the text formatting, which is to change the writing of the text, the size of the text. You can bold, you can italize, underline, you can change the color, and you can also fill. And there are other features on this side right here. All right, so here on the creates, we will find tables, queries, forms, reports, and macros. And these are considered to be the main that is um, the main components of a database. Macros are not used as much as how persons would use tables, queries, forms, and reports. We have external data, and what you will find is, you'll see here, you'll have a section for import, and you will have a section for export. So if it is that you have a document in Excel or in an X access file, or in word or a text document that you want to import into access this is where you would go if it is that you want to send the data that you have now in access elsewhere then you will come to this section where it says export now we move on to database tools um here we have some tools that are used um, for CSEC lower school, what we will focus on is relationships, um, fields and table. As I said, those two came up as a result of the table being open, which is a generic table that you get when you open access. Um, so it is indeed not five, but actually four. If we are supposed to take home, then it would be five, but without it would be home, create external data and database tools. Now, when you come into access, you will find your screen is divided into two. On your left, you will have your object screen and right here you can change to see the objects or um components that you have created so if it is that you want to list all your tables then you do that if you only want to see your queries your forms your reports and different um, navigation tools here then you can switch to that currently or the default will be all access objects so you will see all your tables queries forms reports and so forth right anything that you have opened will appear on the right of the screen now whenever you want to create an object or if it is that you want to look on any of the components of a database you go to create so if you want to cre um, 
create a table, if you want to create a query, if you want to create a form, if you want to create a report, notice the word create, you go to the create tab. So under the create tab, if, and we're going to start off with creating a table, you would select table design. When you select table design, you are going to be in design view. Now there are two views that you will have. We have the data sheet view and we have the design view. The data sheet view is used to enter data into the table and the design view is used to set the data type and the field names for your columns. Good? So let's say for this table, I want to create a table with a list of my students. So I want to store their first name, their last name, their date of birth, and their address so i would create those fields from right here all right so here now we would write the field names so here i'm going to have name and as i said before you can have first name last name if you wish to split it up i'm also going to have And I'm going to come to data type after. I just want to create the field names that first. So I want to have form. I want to have date of birth. And I'm, I'm just going to add some fields so that I can see all the data types. So I'm going to have name, form, date of birth, address, and let me add age also so that i can get in that data type there so once it is that you create your fields you have to tell the database what type of data you want to enter in that field um, this is a form of validation and verification method that is used by access to ensure that the right data is actually entered into the fields so all we are have currency that is incorrect so let's go ahead and change that all right so we are now going to change the data type for these so for name i want to accept text so here for some systems you will see only text um for the newer versions you will see short text and long text I'm going to select short text for mine and to the bottom here you will see that it can accept 255 characters um, for form um, if it is that your form has a combination of letters and numbers you would have to declare that as text because once it is that is a combo um, text is a data type for it so if you're in 3b or 7b that is considered as text and it is not a number so depending on what you're doing there you would have to use number or short text but i'm going to have short text for that for date of birth i'm going to use the date and time um data type so that is going to ensure that the correct format is entered and i don't have to assume whether the first one that is entered is the month or the day in so in cases where you can't decipher um, address I'm going to select also again short text and if it is that I'm going to have the persons enter like their community their postal office and then have their parish um, I would prefer or opt for a long text because that is going to include more data now for age I'm going to select number for that now notice here the ones that we didn't use so we have currency currency as you would know would refer to money so if it is that you're going to have a field where the person is going to enter monetary values then you would use currency auto numbers when you want it to generate a number automatically and it will start at one or zero yes or no this is what we call boolean so it will allow you the persons not to put in yes no maybe so but it is restricted to a yes or a no um we have ole object and the ole object is not used a lot for the c csec syllabus 
but it is used in other instances now your ole object stands for object linking and embedding and it is used when it is that you want to link documents um, or embed documents into your database we have hyperlink hyperlink is when you want to insert a link also which will take you to external of Microsoft access attachment same um, again if you want to attach a document just like OLE and you have calculated which we're going to look on to later on so those are the other data types so once it is that you have created a data type and we're going to look into primary keys but or the types of keys that you can use in access you have to give a unique identifier for your table why if I have this database here I want to use something outside of your name to refer to you when you use I unique identifiers it will ensure that the data is not repeated or there is not much error in terms of the entry of the data so you once it is that you're creating a table it is advised that you give it a primary key or you have a field which is going to state um, which is be going to be unique in terms of the data that is going to be entered there where it cannot repeat that is the uniqueness of it right and that we considered as our primary key so what I'm going to use in this case is student ID and I am going to have the data type for that being auto number, which means that it's automatically going to generate a number for the students. And we could give it a format as to how many digits we want, but I'm not going to go into that. Let me fix this spelling. So after it is that you have done that, to select this one as your primary key, you click on that field and you can come to the top here where it says primary key and you can select that now just in case for some reason while you're in the design view it clicked off design and you're probably on create or external data what you need to do is just to click back on the design ribbon and then select primary key the next option is to right click so ensure that you have the right field connect um, selected so where we have this very red thick line surrounding the row and then you right click and you select primary key once it is that you select any of the two a gold key will appear beside that field and if it is that you want to change it let's say you made a mistake you can always click on the right field and do the very same thing to select as the primary key and it will just change all right now as i was saying now persons have multiple persons will have the same name and as such you can't use name to be unique because you will have multiple johns you will have multiple mary you will have multiple Devante, and so forth and if it is that you don't believe me just take up a um directory i know most persons don't have that anymore but I'm sure you can find somebody who has a directory with a list of names and telephone number and you will find that if it is that you're supposed to search a particular surname or first name there's a myriad of persons who have the same name so that in itself would not cannot be used as a unique identifier in the sense that in entering the data it does not repeat same thing with date of birth, same thing with age, and same thing with address. So you want to give it a unique identifier. Now remember that we are in the design view. For us to take it out of the design view and go into the data sheet view, right, we will first have to save our table. So how do we save our table? We, where it says table one right here, I'm going to right click on that and I'm going to select save give my table a name which is going to signify the type of data that I'm storing in there and I'm going to name this student info 
All right, so notice now that the name of my table now appears to the right of the screen under the objects because that is the only thing that I have created, which is a table. All right, so now we want to move into entering data into this table. So I'm going to come out of design view. And what I'm going to do is that I'm going to click on this icon right here, which says view, click on the arrow. And you will see the two views appearing there so I am currently in design view and you will realize that it is slightly highlighted in this light pink to the left here and if I want to come out of design view I will now select data sheet view so voila here we are now in data sheet view and data sheet view is what allows you to enter the data into the table and you can always move around your fields so for me i want the primary key to be the first thing that is entered so i'm going to just hold down on it click on the field hold down on it and i'm just going to hold down on your keypad and drag it across depending on the device you're using also it may be different in terms of how is it that you move your data now here because we selected um auto number four or student id i will move over to name and let's say I'll enter john do and here i'm going to enter a form and john do is in 7g the date of birth and you will click on the table or you can click on the table and you can go through and select what you want um, just for the interest of time let's say the person was born on sunday and the address um trimbago bahamas jamaica so here we would have entered some data now that is not showing the full um, information that was placed in that field and I'm going to come to the different parts what you do you place the cursor in between to the edge of the two um, columns and you hold down on your mouse pad and you drag it across and you drag it until you're able to see everything that you have in that field here we know here we are now at age and I'm going to, let's say for instance I enter two now notice it's going to tell you now that the data is invalid because of the data type that we use for it. So we said that the data type is number. So two is the description or the worded form for the number two, but this is only accepting two number. All right, so let's do that some more times. And you notice now it automatically adds the student ID for auto number. So let's add Mary Jane. Mary Jane. All right, so Mary Jane is in 9i. And her date of birth is going to be in October. And she is from Santa Cruz. Barbados and I'm going to enter her age which is five all right so let's look now on some of the attributes of a database so the attributes now are going to involve the different aspects and different terminologies that are used in a database here we have a database that we have created the name of the database is test, right? Within that database, so the database is the entire file, within that database, I will have different components. And we said that we got to create to do those components. So the components of the database would be your tables, your queries, your forms, your reports, your macros, and your codes. These can also be considered as objects. So if you see a question asking you what are the components or objects of a database, we're asking for the tables, queries, forms, reports, macros, and code. 
once you reach to a table now there are certain terms that you will use so a field is a single piece of data that is found in a database so here we have Mary jo John Doe being a field or a name being a field that's one field right so it's one field that represents a person thing or um, item that you're using the database to store right there all right that's a field your columns will run downward all right so that's your column so it is also again it will represent a block of data that is running downward in a database you have what we call a record or a tuple in database now that refers to a row of data relating to one person place thing or item being stored in a database so everything that you have highlighted here for John Doe can be considered as a record tuple T -U -P -L -E. so that is name form date of birth address and age and ID number for John Doe or everything going across here for Mary Jane that is considered to be a record all right all right so i hope you find this video informative and it will help you in the learning process